Hi folks, I'm Robert Johnson, and in this episode we're going to talk about the components that make the radio work. We're going to talk about capacitors, resistors, and also vacuum tubes. Now folks, we're going to talk about resistors. Now, these here in this grouping are from the late 20s. Alright, what you see in front of you is a uh, flat wound resistor from the early AC period. And the reason why they wound these on this form is to save space and money. Now, as resistors got better and more sophisticated, they started looking like these. Now, these are the resistors from the early 30s. Now, the resistor you see in front of you is from the early 30s. Now, this is pre-RMA uh, body and dot code resistors. And this one is made by the RIC company. And this is the types of resistors you'll be seeing when you work on the very early 30 radios. The manufacturing got a whole lot better. And the quality got much better. And all that kind of razzmatazz. And when they start using the RMA codes, they started looking like this. And they, these types are what we call in the old radio speak dog bone resistors. Now, what I'm talking about, the, the body and dot code resist, uh, system, is the body, which is this green part, that's the first stripe. The end, which is this black part right here, that's the second stripe. And the dot, when in the middle, that's the third stripe. And sometimes it would add a either a gold or a silver at the end to talk about the tolerance. And, and these here, these are slightly more modern types. <clears throat> And this is a variant of the body and dot code resistor. Now, what you see in front of you this time is a variant of the body and dot code. Now, sometimes they would have uh, only two colors rather than three. Now, the body is the first stripe, like I said before. The end is the second stripe. And then when you go back to the, the body again, that's also the third stripe. So don't be confused by that. And when they start going into stripes, that's what these look like. And these are what we call common comps, and these are ceramics. Now, this is a slightly more modern resistor here. This is a, now, as I mentioned on the body on dot code, the body is the first stripe, the end is the second stripe, and the dot is the third stripe. Now, some resistors you'll see either a gold or silver stripe at the end. This talks about tolerance. Silver is probably 5% and gold is a little bit more, like 20%. And this particular one here is a 1 watt resistor. Now, in the last video, I showed you what, uh, what the resistor was made out of. This, the last one was a, what we call a carbon composition or carbon comp. Now, some resistors were made out of ceramic and other materials, such as these two right here. And these are the type that you would find in a lot more modern receivers or televisions. Okay, folks, now we're going to talk about capacitors. And the capacitors from era, this from the late 20s era look something along this line. And this is an early mica capacitor. Now, these capacitors here, made by the Sprague Company, are the uh, very early AC uh, capacitors. Now, capacitors uh, of this time frame were made with uh, wax paper and aluminum foil, or a tin foil, or whatever kind of foil they could um, they could afford to make out of these. Okay, folks. Now, not as well as. Um, Wax and paper and tin foil they, uh, was used in some of the early in the early days. These are known as uh, micas, and micas were more weatherproof. They last a whole lot longer, and they very seldom went bad. And uh, the grouping you see right here, where I'm pointing out, now these are later mica capacitors around about the 1935 era, that, that time frame. Now, here are some more examples of mica capacitors. As manufacturing got a little better and the prices went down and things went uh, made, were made smaller and smaller. Now, here's a mid-30s mica capacitor, and this one is a little bit more modern. This is from the early 40s. 
Now, the ones we're going to talk about here are these are the later mica capacitors. And sometimes they also came in metal cans, such as these two here. Now, here are the final two examples of mica capacitors. Now, you notice that these ones have, um, have colors on them. That'll, these will tell you the, um, the capacitances, the, the voltage, the rating, and the tolerance of each of these mica capacitors. Now, mica were used also in high frequency sections of the radio because they didn't drift all that much as much as tubular uh, capacitors drift. And mica is basically a, a different type of insulating material. Now, the next grouping of capacitors we're going to talk about is the metal and case type, which were made by various companies, like from Atwater, Kent, Sagamo, and other companies as well. And sometimes they were oil encased for high power applications, and such as this one right here and this one right here. Now, they also came in not only mica shape, but they also came in what you call a tubular shape. Now, these are slightly more modern tubular shapes, but this is generally what they look like. Now, the next group of capacitors we're going to talk about, they're called tubular capacitors, and they have axial leads, which means they come out at, at, the, at one in each end. Now, capacitors of this era were made in-house, some of them by uh, Philco, some by Zenith, and other radio companies in order to keep costs low. But, and uh, this capacitor was made by Sprague, this one was made by Aerovox, and this one made by Sagamo. Now this is a much later mica capacitor, and this one is a ceramic uh, disc capacitor. And that's what you'll find a lot in, in the, uh, the, newer, the newer radios, the televisions, and other pieces of electronic equipment nowadays. Now the last, next to the last grouping of capacitors we're going to talk about is the uh, is a ceramic, the late, much later ceramic, which is this one, and this is what you call a disc capacitor, and they came in many sizes, and they handled from anything from like 25 volts up to 1,000 volts or even higher. Now this disc capacitor here could handle up to 1,000 volts, and this little guy here could handle up to maybe 50 to 200 volts or whatever. Now this is the last grouping of capacitors we're going to talk about. Now these are electrolytic and they were used in filtering the AC hum that were coming off the wall. And this one was this one was used in the um, early mid 30s and this type you can find in the much later uh, much later re, uh, radios. And this one is basically only had one value, say like eight microfarads, and this one had at least about three or four values, and this uh, capacitor can. Okay, folks, now we're going to talk about the vacuum tubes. Now, the vacuum tubes you're going to be encountering are various types, and we're going to start off with the types from this era here. Now, this is a type uh, 24A. And you'll find these in the uh, early AC radios, and these ones have a, like this is called a grid cap, and right here and here. Now, as radios uh, progressed, they got a little bit more sophisticated, and they started using skinny thin tubes like this one here. Now, this one is sprayed is sprayed by the Majestic Company to provide shielding for the uh, RF section and other sections that require <coughs> that require shielding. And this one is called a uh, Type 27. Now, in 1935, they came out uh, with uh, types of uh, that looked like this. These are called octals. Now, they were either metal encased or glass encased, and they were used for many applications. Now, now in some cases you'll find hybrids, and in these, some of these would use a mixture of these types along with these types. Now, the reason why that was done is in order to save money and to use up the old stock that uh, some of the radio companies had. And once these uh, older, older tubes were used up, 
Then it went over to the octal types. Now, the same thing happened when the octal types were starting to be phased out in, uh, in exchange for these miniatures over here. Now, these miniatures were um, used for many applications in the all what you would call the All American Five uh, radios. And when the uh, when these octals were finally phased out, then they started using miniatures, and then later they started using other different types, such as um, oh, new vistas and other things like that. But we don't have any examples of new vistas in this video. But anyway, these are the types that you would be coming across when repairing these old sets. Okay, well, I hope you enjoyed this video, and in the next one, we're going to talk about test equipment. And what I mean is uh, signal generators and, and tube testers and things along those lines.